Dome Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed, baby. Let's talk a little middleweight, you know, slash super middleweight, a.k.a. light heavyweight, you know, everything. Because we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Canelo and Canelo's next fight, right? We've been talking about Canelo lately, and I've been going in on You know what I'm saying? Be having my reasons. Well, you know, you know, one last one was, you know, he's going to fight Billy Joe Saunders. And I put that in with the other ones that we, you know, we say hell no to. Remember hell no to Kovalev Canelo? Hell no to what was the other one? To Andre and Charlo? And hell no to Billy Joe Canelo. Right? Just not what we're trying to see. We want to see some unification, some undisputed in some divisions, especially middleweight. Right? So those are some of the reasons. Right? But um, we got some good news. And that's coming from Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya basically said, man, we, we, uh, Billy Joe Saunders is not the front runner uh, for Canelo's next fight. Now, can we take that for a grain of salt or can we just you know, take it seriously? He is not the front runner for, for the next fight. And for me, personally, that would be good news. Right? Y'all know what I'm trying to see. I'd like to see him with Andre or Charlo. It would have been more significant a few months ago, when it was undisputed versus Andre. Think about that. I'm going to keep mentioning it. An undisputed fight for middleweight. We would have one middleweight champion if that fight would have happened. And on the Mexican holiday. That's the biggest one. But other than that, you could fight your mandatory Charlo. That's the big, biggest fight in Texas right now. Right? We mess around with Cola and them, but it's okay. But I'm glad, you know, he's not going to be Billy Joe Saunders. So we at least we got a little hope. You know? And so I read a little something from the article, you know, let me read a little something, you know, get you warmed up. And it was like in the past, De La Hoya and Canelo never seemed remotely interested in fighting Saunders. The way Saunders spoiled in his fight with David Lemieux several years ago, he arguably hurt his chances of getting fights against Canelo and Gennady Golovkin. Not only did Saunders spoil, but he show, showboated and taunted Lemieux. And that was a bad look. All right. So, you know, my comment to that is he basically whitewashed Billy Joe Saunders and they called him a runner after that, right? But I don't know. Is he supposed to look bad and then you fight him? Well, let's just see. We keep on going on, right? All right, this is De La Hoya. Quote, Saunders is not the front runner. That's for sure. I have no idea who threw that name out there. I have a trip to Mexico. we meet with Canelo and his team, right? Canelo's next opponent on May the 2nd. We'll sit down. I'll stay there for a few days, iron out a deal, and take it from there. Once we have this uh, the name down, we'll have an announcement shortly. The De La Hoya. Now, they're talking about uh, he's not the front runner and he doesn't know who put the name out there. Well, I don't know if he's on the same page as his boy uh, um, Canelo because Canelo said that'll be a good fight. That's who put the name out there, basically. It's Canelo, right? So um, I don't know if what's going to happen there. Or if, but I'll, I'll read a little something else Canelo was saying, right? Um, Let's, let me scroll down a little bit. Okay. He said that he did vacate his light heavyweight, right? Said Daily Hoy about Canelo Alvarez. I'm not sure if he wants to stay at light heavyweight. We'll see. But I think he has a lot of options at 168. It may be a little bit difficult for him to go back to 160, but he has the option. That's what's great about Canelo. He's not a tall guy. He's a wide guy. He's got thick legs and a thick neck. Uh, Daily Hoy continued about Canelo. He knows how to cut weight. He knows how to train hard and be disciplined. That's the advantage that he has. He's very disciplined. So he has the options. I think 168 would be a nice move for him, but it depends on his team. His team knows how his body feels, said David Hoyer. Let me comment on that. Right? Um, discipline. Discipline. That's it. That's a lot. That's why I would tell you when people try to come talk about the Klitschko reign was born. And I keep like Klitschko reign was not born. Two brothers ruling the heavyweight division, basically undisputed. That's what that was. We can't fight each other, and we got all the belts. We're undisputed in the Klitschko family. Actually, we had an undisputed champion after Lennox Lewis, and it was Vitaly, because I think Vitaly beat Vladimir up, or Vladimir, or both. And we can't just ignore that. And that wasn't boring, because they were disciplined and always in shape, right? Like Joshua is now, like Wilder is now. 
and like, um, you know, all of the great fighters who don't blow up between fights. So there's Canelo with discipline. And uh, I think that is a key in most of these fights. And we can't say the same about, about Billy Joe Saunders. What we can say about Billy Joe Saunders is like Tyson Fury. Not that discipline, but talented as hell. <laughs> That's why. Right? So, you know, we don't know what's up, what he's going to fight. But I'm just going to read something else to you like it always is. They said, these are the options for Canelo at 160. Right? It goes to Royata uh, Murata, right? That's the Japanese guy who got the regular title, which doesn't mean he has, doesn't have a title, but he's a good fighter. Jaime Mungia, coming from 154 pounds, just moving up to 160. Didn't fight none of the baddest dudes at 154, you know, because he had seemed to, you know, it was hard for him to make it. So he's up in the, in the high weight, just got a win over O'Sullivan. But um, Canelo, hmm, maybe a Mexican holiday, beating up the young Mexican. Might be something, right? Then you got Sir Guy Darian Chinko. That's the guy who gave Daniel Jacobs uh, all he can handle and gave Gennady Golovkin all he can handle. But Darian Chinko, I just that, those are two title shots right there. You want to give him a third one right in a row and skip past everybody, a third you know, championship match? He should be re rematching Gennady Golovkin. That's what he should be doing, right? Because Golovkin deserved to be supposed to rematch this guy because he arguably beat Golovkin. But Golovkin, don't, anybody argue, beat be, be Golovkin ain't getting a rematch. Ask Jacobs. But anyway, Gennady Golovkin is another option, right? But Canelo ain't even fighting him. And the other one would be Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Andre, the ones I'm talking about, right? So those are the ones he mentioned. Now, let me show you how the article goes. Like I've been telling you guys, this is what happens in the media, right? Now they say Mungia, Darian Chinko, Umarato would have to be viewed as the top three guys under consideration for Canelo at 160. Let me repeat that. Mungia, Derenchenko, or Murata would have to be viewed, would have to be viewed as the top three guys under consideration for Canelo at 160. Now, if you're a casual fan, you'll be like, okay, well, that's, those are the ones. Without asking why. What, what, what the hell? Neither one of those guys are champions. Right? None of those fights with either one of those guys would be for for undisputed or for another belt or anything. Right? So we can't fight. You just basically rule out Charlo, who's the mandatory, and now he's the WBC real champion, and Demetrius Anjade, who's the WBO real champion for unification matches. Those are ruled out. And Golovkin, he done fought two or, uh, two or three times already. Right? They just, it's a myth that people want to see a third one. They would like to see these guys beat up them other guys and then maybe have a third one. Let's see, like what I've been saying the whole time, Golovkin take Charlo and, uh, you know, Canelo, you take Andre, beat both of them, then y'all fight is huge as hell. And you know it, everybody. But that's, that's what we're saying. And, you know, in the other division, 168 division, he has a few people he can fight too. But at the end of the day, what's going on here is Canelo and your boy Oscar De La Hoya are not on the same page. That's what's going on here, right? Canelo, uh, he's the one who put uh, Billy Joe Simon's name in the mix because that's who you'd rather fight. He didn't want to fight him at first. If you remember, remember, we just read it. He didn't want to fight David Lemieux after that. Canelo called him a runner after that, and he didn't want to fight him. They said his fight, his style is not that good because he can get away from you, right? Um, but he would rather fight uh, your boy, uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Now, when it comes to Oscar De La Hoya, he said some things that was swept under the rug about about a month or let's give it six weeks ago. He Didn't he state that Canelo would be considered great if he beats Andrade and Charlo? You can't get around that. You know, right? He doesn't look like me. He speaks the same language as Canelo and he's his promoter. So I don't know if he's getting the same, you know, Zorn, <laughs> we'll call it, as I would get it by saying that, right? You're going to have to beat up Andre and Charlo if you want to be considered great. Now, I'm paraphrasing. He might have said a legend. He might have said this or that. And I know he's talking about you, beating those guys. You'd be more unified. You, you, you know, everybody know what time it is with these guys. You know, a certain name that you mention. As soon as you mention, people start giving excuses and who they fought and all that. Like, dangerous guys have good resumes. That is a myth, myth guys. Dangerous guys don't have good resumes because the good guys are not going near them. 
high risk, low reward like Luis Ortiz is, like Tyson Fury said about Luis Ortiz. That's why nobody, think about this. I'm going to do it in another video, but sometimes when I'm talking about Ortiz, I get into Canelo. So I'm going to do the Ortiz when I'm in talking about Canelo. Look, all these heavyweights are making lists of who they want to fight. Billy and White talking Povetkin and all these, these people, right? Povetkin, Otto Wallen, the guys who lost. That's who he wanted to fight. Now he's going to put some, some more names in there. But not Ortiz, even though Ortiz has been designated for him to fight and he would get wilder immediately. No Ortiz. Tyson Fury, I've got three people. I'm going to fight, man. I'm going to fight Wilder, Joshua, Dylan White. No one is trying to measure against Luis Ortiz at all. Hubert Pulev been over there for, forever. Povetkin been over there forever. No one. No one is. Who? Not even the young cats are talking. The up-and-comers. Why don't Joe Joyce? Remember Joe Joyce whispered that one time? And Abel Sanchez not, man, said, man, we didn't mean that. He, Joe Joyce did not mean that. We can't. We ain't ready for no Luis Ortiz. Joe Joyce is called the juggernaut. 6'6", 250 something. He ain't trying to mess with Ortiz. Abel Sanchez nixed that idea. Okay? These are the kind of things that's going with Ortiz. So when, you know, and, and people just can ignore him and say who he fought. Brian Jennings was probably still his best win. Who he fought? You know, he ain't fought nobody. You can do that with every single dangerous person. There aren't dangerous people that, that people are fighting because that hence they wouldn't be dangerous. So that's what keeps going on with this Demetrius Andre and um, and Charlo. They're so dangerous that, hey, people get irked when you mention them, even though they're the champions with belts, <laughs> right? So I think Canelo basically would rather fight Billy Joe Saunders than one of them, okay? Now he's at 168, and they're going to act like they can't get up there. He can fight at 168. But I think um, your boy Oscar De La Hoya don't want that or doesn't want that. We'll see what's happening going forward. That was very interesting to find out that, you know, your boy Oscar De La Hoya uh, does not want Billy Joe Saunders as the next opponent for Canelo on May the 2nd. But like he also said in the article, he's going to visit Canelo. So, I, I, you know, I see if he's saying the same thing about a week from now, then I'll holler at y'all. Double Sports Talk, worldwide. And I'm up out of here, y'all.